Hey everyone, welcome to the booth here at Create Text Colors. I'm Chris Arpin, and in this video, we're going to talk about our Autoborn sealers. Now, these are just that, these are the first step in your paint process and anything hard surface. So, this is your, your ground coat, your primer essentially. So, these are compatible with all the colors in the Create Text line, and they are designed to achieve quick coverage. Uh, adhere extremely well and have a nice level smooth surface that's a great foundation for your base coat application. So these are applied directly to any of the substrates that you might be using. Uh, minimal prep, we recommend a red scotch brite pad or the equivalent which is basically a 320 grit sandpaper and that's a perfect tooth uh, for, for adhesion for our paints for the, for the sealers and it also will fill that 320 scratch with no problem so you have a nice even surface to begin your paint project on. Uh, the the Autoborn sealers are, are primers. These are designed, again, as that ground coat, that first coat. These are edge to edge like across your whole panel, really not designed for doing small, intricate graphic work, only because the resin system in here is not really designed to, to tape very clean. Sometimes it has a tendency to tear and have a jagged line, but that's, that's the nature of that resin. So for anything where you're doing smaller uh, graphic work and you need an opaque color, we always recommend our Createx opaque airbrush colors or new, our Wicked opaque colors, and that's a perfect product for that type of application. Okay, we're gonna talk about spraying application. So we're gonna get right into it, really simple, straightforward. Full size spray gun, 1.3 to a 1.4 tip size. Uh, if you're using a mini gun, usually a 1.2, that's a common size for a mini gun. And for airbrushes, uh, 0.5 is generally the smallest that we recommend for an airbrush, only because this is a little bit thicker in viscosity. So 0.5 is kind of that, that limit and what we recommend. Uh, for reduction, we recommend our 4011 reducer, so full size spray gun. 10% 4011 reducer. It's going to put you right where you want to be for the for the full size and the mini gun. Uh, and sometimes when you step up to that or down to that airbrush uh, with a 0.5 tip, 15 to 20%. It's just going to help. Again, it's a smaller tip size. This is a little bit thicker, um, so that that 15 to 20% is going to help just kind of flow a little bit better through that smaller tip size. So application. 50% overlap, it's very straightforward, very simple. This does spray a little different from the Createx paints in that you can put it on a little bit wetter, a little bit heavier, a medium wet coat. Uh, we'll, we'll show that, I'm gonna spray in a little bit. You guys can see exactly what it is we're talking about. Um, and and the, the great thing is, is this product has excellent sag resistance and it also displays excellent leveling properties. So you're gonna put it on and as it dries, it's gonna smooth right out. So we're gonna get the booth running and uh, we'll be right back and we'll start spraying. All right guys, we are back, the booth is running and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. So this is our first coat. This is Sealer White. Okay guys, we are back. Uh, coat number one is dry. Uh, you can see it has a nice, smooth, even surface. You can see how well that went down in terms of coverage that was over black. So one coat of white really covered nicely. We're going to go ahead and do a second coat just to show you what two coats look like. Um, we are in a booth, so we have a, it's more of a controlled environment. That's one thing I want to talk about is dry times. Uh, this was about 10 minutes, uh, and it's pretty humid out, but we again, we have controlled environment that we're spraying. So obviously if you're spraying open air in your studio or in your shop uh, and, and you don't have a controlled environment, it's obviously going to vary a little bit in terms of drying time. So maybe 15 minutes rather than 10. If you can have a little bit of air movement, even just a fan to, to move air across the panel, as with all water-based coatings, a little bit of air movement goes a lot farther uh, in terms of that dry time. And one thing I want to touch on is it is imperative that you do this every coat, as with all our paints, you want to apply over something that is dry. You never want to go wet on wet, because all you're going to do is start adding more material, and it's going to re-wet, and it's just going to cause you more problems. So that's key. Make sure it's dry before you go on your next coat. So keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do second coat, and uh, we'll, when we come back, we'll do some spraying with an airbrush. So this is coat number two. Okay guys, we are back and I have my airbrush and you can actually see behind me, uh, while coat number two is drying, uh, we're going to do a little bit of airbrush spraying. So this is my TH2, it's a 0.5, uh, it's a great 
spray gun, mini spray gun airbrush for spraying our sealers and we're going to do a little bit of Lexon, like an RC car body. So I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to spray this. I actually went ahead and added about 5% more reducer to the 10%, so it's going to spray excellent out of this gun. And uh, we're going to go ahead and show you how easy it is. So that is one coat, we're gonna let that dry, and two coats is gonna have this car completely covered. Okay everyone, welcome back. You can see second coat of our Autoborn sealer went down beautifully, and this is totally covered and very smooth. Uh, we have the car, the speed shape in front too. Uh, you can see even if you look on the inside here, really nice, really smooth application. That was two coats, I went ahead and did a second coat while we were away, and uh, I mean that's it, that's totally done. Um, once this is dry, like what we have in front of us here, it's been about a half an hour. Uh, and again, we're in a booth, premium conditions in terms of airflow and air movement and temperature. Um, half an hour, more than enough time. Um, we recommend waiting about an hour before you start taping on this or anything going, moving to your next step. Now, the reason we recommend that is in the event that you do have to sand anything, like I said, I have a piece of 800, 800 grit right here. And this is going to shave and powder right up on the paper. It's not going to clog at all. And this is a great feature of this because there are no urethane products out there that will sand like this in that short of a period of time. Um, and again, this is 800 and I can continue wiping it. You could probably do an entire car with one piece. This is, I can wipe that right out. It's not rolling, it's not balling up, it's powdering right up on that paper and you're going to be able to use this paper forever to get rid of any kind of nib. So 600 to 800 dry sands unbelievably well. I don't want to wet sand it, dry sand it, but uh, usually when you go with a finer grit paper on a lot of urethane sealers, it will clog the paper. So once you have that done and you have a surface that you denibbed and sanded down, if you need to, you want to go ahead and prep the surface with a solvent based, and that is key. Just like I said, don't wet sand. You do not want to use a water-based pre-clean. So this is a solvent-based pre-clean. This is a product from PPG. It is the SX320. So it is a pre-paint. It's the least aggressive solvent that they make. Lint-free towel. Go ahead and wipe that. Clean side, and that is ready for the application of your base coat or whatever it would be that you would be putting on top of that. So it's not always necessary. You do not have to sand this before you move on to the next step. But if you do, those are kind of the simple steps that we recommend. So what we're going to do is go ahead and go to the last part of this and show you how we can color key a particular sealer for the application of a base coat color. So we'll be right back. We'll get the booth running and we'll show you what we're talking about. All right, everyone, welcome back. While you were away, we were uh, quickly clean this panel off and I just did a quick little tape out uh, in preparation for the next and last portion that we're talking about and that was my mentioning of color keying. So you use the sealers to color key with your base coat or basically your color coat of paint you're going to apply. So a quick example of that would be for instance we have our process blue right here. I would use this under or Wicked Pearl Blue. Uh, and the process blue is lighter, we have a darker blue, and again, you always want your, your ground coat to be a little bit lighter than the color to get the brightest value. So process blue would go under pearl blue. Another thing you can do, and what I'm gonna demonstrate here, with fluorescent colors, if I were to use our sealer yellow and put fluorescent yellow over that, the sealer yellow is a little bit darker than the vibrant fluorescent yellow, so it actually will mute it a little bit. So a trick that we have and a tip that we have that we can give to you and we're going to demonstrate here is mixing our fluorescent yellow with our sealer yellow. So you can go with ratio one to one up to four to one depending on how vibrant you want to make it. But what that is going to allow this product to do is if you're familiar with fluorescence, you know that they are always going to fade and that fade is going to be way more apparent, really vivid over white. You know, most fluorescents, as they fade, as they degrade, anything, any, any fluorescent, whether it's solvent or water-based or, or anything, it's going, to, it's going to fade. It's the inherent nature of it. So if you do it over white, it's going to get washed out and look chalky, especially if this is something out in the sun all the time. If you have a sealer that's color keyed to that, when that color starts to fade, you will have at least a yellow background. Or if you do it with green or red and, and what have you in terms of the color spectrum, 
but at least you won't have a color that looks washed out. It's not going to be as visible and apparent as that color starts to break down. And again, this is only something that this is going to be outside really getting uh, an extreme amount of UV exposure. So what I did, I went ahead and I mixed that up ahead of time here before, and I mixed uh, two parts of our, actually two parts of our fluorescent to one part of our seal of yellow. So I mixed that together, reduced that 10%, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and spray two coats over this bottom portion, and then we'll untape this, and then we'll spray our fluorescent yellow over that and over our white, and you'll see there really isn't any difference in terms of the, the brightness and the vividness of that fluorescent, but over time, the, the panel that has the fluorescent yellow mixed with the seal of yellow is going to fare that much better. So we'll get the booth going and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we are ready to spray our first coat of our sealer. So this is coat number one. All right, guys, we are back. Coat number one is totally dry. It's been about 10 minutes. And uh, again, dry to the touch is what we want. We don't want it just to be wet. You don't want to put it wet on wet. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put coat number two, and that'll be fine. And we'll. Uh, Move on to the next step. So this is coat number two. All right, guys, we are back. The second coat is totally dry. It's totally untaped, ready to go. And now I have my fluorescent, which is ready to spray. So just a quick recap. Uh, this was Autoborn Sealer Yellow mixed with fluorescent yellow. Two parts fluorescent yellow to one part Autoborn Sealer Yellow. And that gave us a nice, bright ground coat to apply the fluorescent yellow over. And another thing in terms of talking about uh, key, color keying, there's a very low edge here, right? So the less material you can put on, the better. So that's always gonna be beneficial. Less coats of material to, to achieve that final color, it's always gonna be beneficial in the long run, dry times and all that. So we are gonna go ahead and apply our fluorescent. This is straight up, this is fluorescent neat, right over all this and we can see the difference. Guys, welcome back. Coat number one is dry. This is coat number two. Hi right, guys, this is coat number three. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is totally dry after three coats, and you can see, I just wanted to, again, recap um, and, and kind of reiterate why we did what we did. If this is gonna be outside in the sun, like we mentioned, and, and it's gonna get hammered with UV light, right, hammered in the sun, this portion is going to eventually fade to white. It is gonna be white, and that yellow is gonna look washed out, very chalky. This lower portion, because it's yellow underneath from that yellow sealer, it is gonna stay a little bit more vibrant. It's still gonna look yellow. It's not gonna have that chalky washed out look. So in terms of, of as that fluorescent fades out, it's gonna still fade to yellow. It's not gonna look just completely washed out. So that kind of wraps up that portion of it. I just wanna show you real quick too. This is that car that we did with that airbrush. And you can see that's Lexan on the outside. And all I did was wipe this down. So that is extremely durable in terms of how, how we prepped this, which we, we basically did not prep. We just went, wiped it down and went right over it with uh, two coats of our sealer. So the last part of this we want to touch on is our 6013 silver sealer. And that is a phenomenal product for that real glitter bomb effect. That's what I always call it. Uh, and it's a great ground coat for our Candy 2.0. So I have my light right here. I'm going to show you guys. This is silver sealer over one of our little speed shapes. And it has an fantastic metallic effect to it, right? That looks great. The brightness, the glitter, and that's two coats right off the gun. So that's a perfect ground coat for the application of our candies, our Candy 2.0 system. And this is actually the recommended ground coat 
uh, when we're spraying our candy, anything from our Candy 2.0 system. So this is our Poison Green, and you can see that Silver Sealer really pops and makes that color extremely vivid and vibrant. And uh, two coats, that's gonna cover fantastic, and the nice thing about it is it actually lays down extremely well and smooth. I don't know if you, you're probably not gonna represent well on camera, but it, this is like velvet. This is extremely smooth. It's gonna be very easy to tape on. And a lot of times what you might have happen with, with metallic silver ground coats, um, you kind of get these edges or, or the sharp edge of the metallic. And a lot of times that'll grab the candy and sometimes it has a tendency to make the candy look like it's dirty. You know, you get hot spots and dark spots in that candy. So this is really smooth and, and you, you necessarily don't have to put something over this before you go to your Candy 2.0. So great option, the 6013 Silver Sealer. So I think that wraps this video up. Thanks for checking us out. For Create Text Colors, I'm Chris Arpin, and we'll see you guys next time. All right.